Good morning. Welcome, welcome to Voices of the Festival. Um, we are very happy to be back. Um, we had a little break after we had a fantastic gala um, a couple of weeks ago at uh, the Harmony Club in New York, uh, <clears throat> featuring um, Larry Brownlee, Mark Delavant, um, um, Santiago Ballerini, Michael Liu, and many own, many a lot of people, and um, and honoring George Shirley um, as a, a worthy of the Milnes Prize. So uh, we are very happy um, that, to be back in our regular Monday, uh, Friday morning time. Okay, uh, and today we have um, chair of the board, uh, Toby Hollimer. We're going to invite her to join us. Um, and see, here we go, Toby. There we go. <clears throat> so she, she had to accept the invitation, and. Uh, hopefully it's going well. There we go. Ah, we hey, <laughs> see, you it was nervous, easy, though. right? Easy. Yeah. Okay. I need to. I need to move this a little yeah. down. Yeah, I need so, to move mine, mine a little down um, too. I hope I connect us. Okay, it always change a bit. There uh, we go. That's better. Now you can see. Yeah. Now you can see my my deck in the outside. There you are. Perfect. And I can see. How are you doing? Good. Doing. Fine. I was yes, I, I was telling first... everyone about the the gala that was so fantastic. Oh, amazing! I'm so happy we were there. I yeah. know, right? So I thank you for coming all the way from Savannah. You and many other people of our supporters from the Savannah Voice Festival. As right. you know, um, and I'm going to explain how it works. Um, <clears throat> the the umbrella organization is called the Cheryl Mills Voice Programs. Um, which were founded by um, Cheryl Mills and Maria Subes. Mm -hmm. And the idea was to, to perpetuate the, the legacy of great singing that is embodied in Cheryl and his career. So <clears throat> the idea was to uh, continue and, and share his amazing uh, legacy. And in, in that, there were different way of doing that. Uh, one was the first the creation of the voice experience, which was uh, a program, uh, a summer workshop in which um, several master teachers will come to a, one location and then young singers and emerging artists will come and work with these amazing uh, people, artists that had um, great careers. Uh, and it got, it was very large. Uh, I think the largest we have was actually in Savannah. We have 80, uh, 80 members of the studio, which is very, very large. And, um, and there was always performance related to that. But eventually um, we moved to Savannah 11 years ago and we created a, a Savannah Voice Festival, which is a performing um, branch of of the Cheryl Mills programs and the Savannah Voice Festival performed two weeks of, of events <clears throat> every day and many, many days, two events a day, uh, included opera performances, um, musical theater concerts, song recitals, uh, art songs, oratorio, um, individual recitals. So we do a lot of a lot of events that's uh, in august uh, and then during the year the savannah voice festival has a present in presence in savannah doing other events and one other branch of the cheryl mills voice program is the savannah opera which is the the producing the opera producing branch uh, and mostly we uh, we do productions in the part of the savannah voice festival it's called Savannah Opera at the festival, but uh, eventually we'll do productions during the year. And then um, other events that happens, not in Savannah, uh, uh, but other places. In fact, Voice Experience is going to start soon in, um, 
Florida. In, uh, Florida, and we do a workshop, almost a two-week workshop in Tarpon Spring. We, again, we bring uh, master teachers to the program, and we have about 15 singers. Uh, so it's, it's a full, full event. It's just almost two weeks, a little less than two weeks, and uh, concerts and uh, recitals and, and mostly uh, workshops and and lessons and then we have opera idol which is a competition in which uh, several invited artists um, compete to get a full scholarship either at a voice experience program or at the savannah voice festival event um, so uh, those are some of our um, wow. reach right. as the as the sherman's program uh, and the gala um we, we do have a, a New York week uh, also. The, the same way we have the Savannah Festival, we have the, the New York Voice Week. And um, and for that one, we have the Opera Idol. We have a masterclass. This year, we had Cheryl, um, George Shieldy doing a masterclass at Opera America. Um, we have other uh, events. Next year, we're going to have a full performance open to the public um, of arias and concerts. And we finish our uh, New York week with an amazing gala uh, with a lot of our friends that are really, really fantastic stars and either, either veterans uh, like um, uh, James Morris or, or before we have Federica von Stade or Denise Graves, and um, and very people that are right in the middle of the career, like like uh, in this case Larry Brownlee or Mark Delavan, and and Santiago Valerini and young uh, up and coming uh, future stars uh, like Minhao and, and people that are or or, or Melanie Spector, people that are uh, in the in the early career of a seemingly very successful one that's going to hopefully go where it should. So this is yeah. a bit a crash course. I mean, nothing that you don't know, uh, right. but uh, I think And thankfully I've been, I just see on my screen, by the way, some writing. Do you see it? Yep. yep. What do I do? How do I get rid of it? You can, unfortunately. That, oh, that no. is the people, yeah, yeah. That is the people communicating with us. Oh dear, so, you have to ask them so, to please take it off. <laughs> <laughs> There's no way. Uh, so, so I wonder if I can is... move my move my thing a little bit. So, well, I'm right in the middle of the writing. I guess I'll just have to deal with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's just um, you can pull it. You can pull it down a bit, but it still will be some some writing yeah. in the bottom. Yeah, I'm, but I'm trying to do that, and it's not it's, happening. It's better for you if you are in the middle of your square, because that's what's going to eventually. Eventually, the writer will not show in the recording. So like, like this. Yep, that's great. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Well, you'll hear me if not. It doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, that is uh, that is the way that that our uh, audience had to communicate uh, and tell us you know, uh, what they think and say hello and everything. So you can pull back and up, but you cannot. Uh, we tried, and uh, you yeah. cannot delay uh, delete the whole thing. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh well. <laughs> All right. Well, we apropos of your speaking about, um, I mean, I've been to. We were just in New York. Um, and experienced all of the wonderful things that happened in New York for, I think I've gone three or four different years. And also um, last summer, went down to when it was being done at Disney, the uh, studio program. So seeing that firsthand was, was wonderful and meeting a lot of the young people who I had, whom I had been in touch with during the pandemic when we were only doing things on Zoom. I may, because one of the things I love about having here in Savannah is I get to know a lot of the singers. Right. And um, so I, w I called a number of them and got to chat with them. So I got to see them in Florida last year, you know, when we weren't live. Anyway, Fantastic. yes. Good. But, uh, well, you should, go, you should go to Florida this, this year again. Uh, <laughs> you know, it's going to be in the, the last week of May. So it's coming right. up in two weeks. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, it would be um, nice. It's not going to fit into my uh, life, unfortunately. Right. All right. Too many That's things good. going on. But good. yeah. And where are you right now? I'm at home in Savannah. Okay. I've been here for 24 years. I'm in my house and looking out on greenery and the golf course and um, oh. live at the landings and uh, have a, my, what I call my sunroom behind me. I'm sitting at the kitchen table, but uh, has a bay window that opens up to a very, very pretty view as far as I'm concerned, although the deer right. have eaten so many of my, my shrubbery, but that's life. <laughs> 
<laughs> that's great. That, but you know, that's also I. I, I mean, I guess I, I come from New York, so I still find deer very, very charming, and 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 yeah, it's just lovely to see such a big, big um, wildlife that is not threatening. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Only yeah, the plants so, cringe when they see them. That's coming. true. <laughs> But yeah, you have to be sure, careful sure you. when you're driving at night, though, because they, you know, they cross the street. They're they're all over the place. But right. it is lovely. I love I love being in this kind of an environment. Right. And um, and where are you from originally? Well, I was born in Brooklyn, New York, and I moved to Lakewood, New Jersey, to live on a chicken farm. Um, with my family uh, when I was eight, and then graduated from high school uh, at 17, and went back to Brooklyn to live with an aunt of mine while I worked because I wasn't able to go to college at that point and financially and um, worked and went to school at night yeah. until, until, yeah. So what, I, what, um, what kind of schooling did you do? Um, I, I was studying, at first I wanted to be a uh, major in English because I worked for a publishing company. I worked for Macmillan Publishing Company in the textbook department. And in fact, I even got to edit a book that my boss was lovely enough to get me to do. But um, so I thought, oh, that's what I want want to do well if you live anywhere outside of new york or boston or something those kinds of things then i mean we're talking whew, 1964 okay. so we're talking like 60 years ago um but anyway i i went to school at night and then uh four years later i got married i met my husband um after his freshman year in college he was an engineer uh studying engineering and going to school way upstate new york and uh we got married I think a week after graduation. Oh, wow. So, yeah. And then he worked for GE for 35 years in marketing, not straight engineering, and um, sales and marketing, actually. And we had some wonderful experiences. We, um, we got married. We was on a training program. We lived in Philadelphia, Rome, Georgia, and Houston for about a two-year period. And then uh, when he went to work for International GE, we lived in New Jersey again. Then we moved to Kansas City, we moved to St. Louis, we moved to New Jersey again, then we moved to Connecticut and then upstate New York, where he retired um, in 1998. And we moved, we were looking for something like what we live in. Um, and so we, I've been here 24 years. Sadly, he passed away 18 years ago and only had five healthy years, but loved it here. And um, so, and my daughter, I have two children, son and a daughter. They're in their 50s. And um, my daughter and son-in-law, and they're then six months old, moved here shortly before when my husband was ill and shortly before he passed away. And so um, we, you know, you know, I have them here. In fact, my youngest granddaughter, uh, who will be 18 in July, was born here in Savannah. And now she's going to college. <laughs> wow. Her older sister just finished a year in college. So I have four grandchildren. Um, my two boys live in Houston, which is where my son is. And um, they're 26 and 24. And actually, my son is getting married today to, um, he was divorced several years ago, and to a wonderful woman who has an 11-year-old daughter. So I'll have a new grandchild. And wow. they're getting married in Houston, a quick, a, a, um, you know, civil wedding at the courthouse, and then they had a trip planned anyway. But we had a lovely family reunion for my birthday in March. I share a birthday, as you know, with right. Maria Zubas. Yes, 12th of March. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so so they're they are getting married at civil union, but they're not making a, a, a party right now, obviously. Party will be in, yeah, they're going to the courthouse today, and uh, my grandsons will be there. And uh, we will have a big family party in July, because his wife um, is a teacher. And so this is busy. You know, she took the day off from school. <laughs> wow. Oh. Yeah. Wow, that's it. So, that's great. So I, uh, I, I must things. tell you that um, <clears throat> I was tickled by the chicken farm. Tell me more about the chicken farm. Well, my uncle, my dad's brother, had um, left New York and joined his brother-in-law on the other on my aunt's side. Um, and that was big business. And a lot of the a lot of people, Jewish families especially. Um, in different parts of, of New Jersey, but I was in uh, out, right outside of Lakewood, um, Central Jersey, and that was you know it was we raised the chickens basically for eggs. My father would go into the city and sell eggs, you know, apartment apartment. At one point, but for, at first we were part of a 
a conglomerate called Jersey Jill. So we would, as a kid, I would stamp the eggs. We had a big, a big, I don't know, uh, like a foam rubber hand thing with a handle, and you dip it in the ink, and it had a little insignia, um, you know, saying yeah. Jersey Jill. And so we would send the eggs, and the, we we had seventeen acres. So wow. we, um, but there were, yeah, there were like two or three farms right across, you know, right in a row, and they all had kids my age or my sister's age. So we we had fun. We played. Yeah, it was. You know, I didn't work on the farm as such, although we helped sometimes. You know, did you handle the? Did you have to stamp every egg? Yes, but there was twelve on a pad. On a pad. Oh, oh so no, no, like, no, no, yeah, no. it was, it was a, a stamp pad, but it had twelve little <clears throat> things that you know you did at a time. Yeah, okay. and we'd layer it in these cartons and these big, big boxes. And I don't remember how. Like, I guess Jersey Jill group came and picked them up. I, I don't remember um, specifically because then, then the big egg, you know egg farms, you know, and chicken farms, Purdue and all of those, you know, came in and North Carolina became a hub. And so um, I guess we went out of the business, I don't know, probably I was about a young teenager. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, oh. So your, your parents stopped working in the, in the, egg, in the chicken farm? Well, um, yeah, no, the, the farms were still there. Some of them stayed. My family just got out of it. My uncle, um, I guess went on. They went on to do something else. We lived in a duplex house next to my aunt and uncle, um, but it was it was fun growing up. You know, it was. I loved the, the good thing was that I still had connections in New York. I, I had a childhood friend that we met when we were when I was four. She was a little older than I was, and we're still friends today. So um, you know, I would go back to the city, and we had family in in New York. So we would go in. We lived about sixty miles away, which in those days took us. I don't know. A couple Couple of hours. <laughs> oh, okay. Right. Well, I mean, now it's an hour into Port Authority, but whatever. It's, so it drive, was, yeah, yeah, it was then... an interesting, interesting growing up. Great, great, good. And uh, and and why do you guys choose to move to Savannah? Um, um, my husband wanted. Thankfully, was able to retire at fifty five, fifty six with full benefits. That was a blessing. And um, because I said he he passed away six years later. Um, at a very young age, he was only 62. But um, we wanted South. He had a friend whose parents lived here at the landings. And so he wanted a private golf course community, you know, not a resort, not one where then other people were coming to visit as a resort. And when we heard about this, he said, I think this is it. Um, so we didn't look around so much. We looked a little bit and we came over the bridge because we we're on the other side of the intercoastal. And um, it was like, oh, wow. Yeah, we loved it. So we, we came, I guess, the first time in February, like about in 1998. Um, and we moved in um, September. We bought, closed on the house in June, did a little repairs. And um, yes, yeah, so I've been here 24 years, which is the longest I've lived anywhere ever in my life. <laughs> But, and um, uh, yeah, it's... Uh, I feel that that must be a hard, I mean, a difficult decision to decide where to move for retirement, right? Because, yeah. I mean, the, the, yeah. the world is your, I always say that the hardest part of, the, of, of making a decision is the things that you leave out, not the one that you yeah. choose. There are plenty of good, good options. Point. The problem is that you had to choose not to choose something else, right? A good point. This, though, just grabbed us. And we went looking at another place and we kept saying, yeah, but at the landings, at the, land, the realtor, one, one place, we said, She said, I think you've made up your mind. And also, we had moved around so much that I was very comfortable moving. And we said to ourselves, we didn't know anybody. We knew not a soul. Because um, this, this colleague of my husband's parents had, had passed away, I guess. We never connected with them. Um, and we said, well, we don't like it. We'll move. Right. You know, if there's someplace else that comes up. So we were very, very comfortable moving into new environments. Now, of course, before, when we moved, we always had his work and his colleagues to connect with. But... I'd have to get the kids settled in school and I, I mean, it just, and get myself involved in things that were meaningful. But another reason that Savannah was, was a plus is that we really like, uh, I needed to be somewhere where I can get involved in the community. And so uh, just liked what I saw. Yeah. Uh -huh. We just and, liked it. And, and how, how was your, I mean, you, you, you tell us you lived many, many places. Why do you, why do you like Savannah? Well, some of it may be the time, you know, the time in my life. Um, 
certainly here at the landings, it was easy to meet people. Uh, I, I say to other people moving here, you'll have you'll meet two, more people than you can handle ever because you know we were retired. Every day was a Saturday. We could go out every night. You know, host parties every night. It wasn't like, oh, we have to go to work in the morning. I mean, the only work, Steve golfed about four or five days a week. You know, I golfed two days a week at the time, although that wasn't my main focus. You know, I really wanted to, I got involved right away with some um, not-for-profit organizations. And um, so, uh, but it just, you know, the other thing for us, and it's sort of how I met Marie and Cheryl, um, was that the Jewish community was important to us. And um, we, you know, right, joined a congregation. And I'll tell you more about that, you know, as we talk about meeting Marie and Cheryl. Um, but um, it just was comfortable. It just easy, easy, just getting to know people. And um, the lifestyle, you know, we couldn't, couldn't wish for a better lifestyle, frankly. Great. And, and, um... And you said that uh, you were very interested in, in involving in community. And have you had done before moving to Savannah work with with nonprofit? Yeah, yeah, I always have. And in fact, my last job was with a, a family and children's service agency, not not a government agency. It was in upstate New York. It was called Captain Community Action for Parents, Teens, and Interested Neighbors. And they have youth shelter. They have they deal with a lot of things. And I was their administrative director for. Well, I, I joined them as an assistant to the to the director, and then, um, but I worked for yeah. I've been president of League of Women Voters, and um, in one community, and um, I mean each place we've gone, I've gotten involved in different things. Uh, you know, uh, in one community, I was a um, assistant to the director of a mental health center branch. Um, so that's just sort of been my own passion. I mean, now since I've been here. I've just, you know, I'm on three boards right now and have been on many others. And just that's where my heart takes me. My heart takes me to doing something important. I'm not a bridge player. I'm not a Mahjong player. Um, you know, I, I did golf. I, I, I dropped golf, you know, a few years ago because it wasn't interesting to me anymore. And um, just the connections in the community are just so important. And Savannah, I mean, you know, I get letters every day and request to be on boards, which I'm very, you know, honored has happened. But um, Savannah just, and it's small enough city that you really get to connect with people. Right. And so many of us support everything, you know, <laughs> just all the arts, all the, all the charities and stuff, because I like to support local things. I like to see it, you know, hope that my dollars, whether they're, many or few um will will help our community right and and uh so how do you um first involved with with savannah voice festival well um i was president of congregation mikva israel which is the reform congregation in savannah it happens to be a historic congregation it's um uh founded in 1733 it's the third oldest jewish congregation in the united states and we have the only Gothic style, it's, we're the only Gothic style synagogue still in use. There were a number of them uh, that were built during the um, Victorian era. Our, this is our second iteration of a synagogue. Um, it was built in 1876. So I, I say that for anyone listening, come to Savannah and don't miss the tour. We have two Torahs. The Torah are the first five books of the Bible. It's a scroll. And we have two of them from the 1400s. Wow. So, um, yeah, we have a wonderful museum. We do tours Monday through Friday, and anyone is welcome to come to services on Friday night and Saturday. Wow. So anyway, so I was I was president, and Marie and Cheryl somehow connected with um, uh, the temple to use the sanctuary. In fact, our sanctuary has fabulous acoustics. I, we may want to check it out yeah. sometime as a venue for something. Uh, the, the music festival has used it many times. Um, and so, uh, oh. um, I hope, what? sorry, sorry, I, I, I lost you. Here we oh, go. Okay. there we go. Hopefully. Okay. Yeah. So, um, this writing on here is <laughs> feels so weird. I don't know if I move back. No, no whatever. No. I'll leave it. All right. So, um, 
so they were they were doing a Verdi program. Um, I think I think it really was just video at that point. I think they were showing and Cheryl was talking, et cetera. I couldn't go to the program because I was having a board meeting in the other room. But I came in to say hello and meet Maria, whom, as I said, I had spoken with. And uh, Kathy and Les Anderson were there. Now, I knew them from the landings. So we chatted. And of course, Kathy is, and, and then met Wes and Judy Krulik for the first time then. And um, uh, Kathy, I remember saying something about, oh, you know, well, you want to be on our mailing list? You want to know more about it? I said, sure. So I started getting information and came to a, um, came to a, uh, concert I think it was at Helen Downing's it might have been at the I think it was Helen's at any rate um and it was wonderful and Kathy pointed out one of the singers Paolo Paolo Lapa um said oh he I sponsored him he was doing a, a guitar thing you know some um I don't know if it was uh Fado or whatever but um so I said to her oh how do you sponsor somebody what does that mean and um about two or three days later, Cheryl calls me. Now, I didn't know Cheryl. I knew his name. I have no background in opera at all. I love vocal music um, and, you know, love, uh, love theater. But um, I had, though, I'll just sort of digress a little bit. I had um, a season lawn pass for Saratoga Performing Arts Center in Saratoga, New York. And so um, I had seen Turandot. I call, say it Turandot. It's probably Turandot, but having studied French and studied French in high school. <laughs> um, so I remember that I might have seen others because in the summer at SPAC, there would be the, um, I think that was the New York opera at that time. There was the Philadelphia Orchestra and the ballet, New York City Ballet. So it was a wonderful experience for many, many seasons. And so that I was exposed to it and I liked it. Um, but really had no background again just loving vocal music of all kinds and so Cheryl calls me and it's like his name was familiar but I really didn't know about him yet and he didn't know me and I thought wow that's impressive you know and called me and told me about sponsorships and I've been sponsoring ever since and then a few years ago um well then I met Maria and I said Maria and I have the same birthday and just clicked and I started meeting people and um one of the things that I did also was house singers pretty early in my connection. So I was president in 2014 and 15. So it was one of those years, I don't remember which one, that I connected and started going to programs. And Howe's, um, uh, let's see, it was Michaela Sager, I think is her last name, and Tim Murray. Yeah, well, and wow. um, yeah, it was such fun. Uh, that was probably, so, so that they, was they, I think they came they came to a, um, what's it now when we did the, the, the production with, with the Savannah Phil during the year? Or was it in the I summer? Remember. I think it was. I thought it, thought it was in the summer, but it may not have what? been. Yeah, I don't know. I don't remember how long they stayed. It was certainly at least a couple of weeks, I think, that they were, maybe a week. Okay. It wasn't just for an overnight thing. They were here for a little while. By the way, they're so, both doing really well. They both, yeah, I followed them a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, uh, they both went to Maryland, and eventually they, they made it to the to the Adlers, which is the big, big young artist in San Francisco, one of the top five in the country. And and I know, um, um, uh, what's Murray? Um, what's his first name? Murray. Tim. Murray? Tim. Tim, Tim. Yeah, Tim Murray is is having a beautiful career, but so is Michaela, both doing really well and, and getting professional engagements. And so it's really uh, great, very, very good. I think, I think Tim won the, the, the Met final, but certainly he is in, uh, in the um, Adlers, which is, you know, one of the best young artists. So that's really great. Yeah. So it's been, um, anyway, so I got involved, you know, and then um, and I, you know, we, we came to things and, um, enjoyed everything and got to connect with Maria more. And then um, I don't remember how many years I've been on the board, but they asked me to be on the board. And I think it was Barry, who I'm, we met for coffee and I had not met him and approached me. And I, yeah, I, I consider it. I, I love, in fact, ironically, that year, 
I got three offers, one from the music festival, one from the Philharmonic, and one from the voice festival to be on their board. And um, <laughs> it was like, it wasn't a hard decision because the voice festival is family. Right. The others are, are institutions. Right, right. And to me, that, that was a big, and, and so they asked me to chair um, because, uh, you know, Barry being New York and Hilton Head didn't really know the local people and my involvement in so many community things um, gave me a basis. So I was sort of boots on the ground here in Savannah, um, which has, you know, I think now others have gotten to know many more people, but that was sort of, uh, I think the impetus for my, you know, additional involvement. Right. Well, there was also, I mean, if you're talking about it happened after 15, it was our third or fourth year in, in Savannah was we were, I mean, we're still young. It's only 10. We, we turned 10 last year. So it's not a lot of time. I mean, it's, it's a lot of time and it's not a lot of time, but at the same time. So, but uh, especially with the almost three years of pandemic, which was, complicated um but but you were you were involved with us in a long time so so yeah and, it's been yeah it's, it's family it's just family how is that um how would you find the the fact that we are family what do you mean family well first of all show marie embrace everyone as family they have them in their home they you know there's this communication there's there's knowing about each other from a personal perspective instead of just a business perspective and i think they i know that they nurtured the organization um with less bureaucracy and more interaction you know and and i think the fact that people you know get invited especially to their house i mean that's a biggie that you you know you have that intimate connection with somebody right. in, in their home and, and sharing meals and, you know, not formally. Um, and I think that their nurturing of the young artists is, is what makes it feel like a family. The other thing was, I mean, I've been ho hosting voice festival people. Uh, I mean, Lonnie has a key to my house because she can come and go, you know, <laughs> but uh, because I, she stayed with me many times, but um, getting to know the singers and understanding their journey. Um, I even, they even tried to teach me breath control, you know, how to breathe. I sort of understood it a little bit, but such technicalities that I'm just so awed by the, the, mecha the mechanics of singing. Right. And, uh, and, and the, the vocal cords as an instrument, um, you know, the voice as an instrument, but um, getting the one-on-one the -on -one with, with the singers, either through them staying at my house or just, Again, the the comfort level of interacting. I've heard from other um, from the singers that other festivals very often entail having to be very prim and proper and honor your sponsors. Not that they don't, but just there's not that personal interaction with the sponsors. And here, that is cultivated, and so right. that that makes one feel like family when you really get to know them and uh, and are invited and encouraged to connect with the singers and vice versa. And you were you uh, first in the board and then you became a chair, correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And mm -hmm. and how was your uh, your first involvement with the board before being a chair? Oh, it, it was it was great. You know, it was wonderful. Um, again, uh, you know, when you work closely with Marie and Cheryl, and of course now you and Chad. I mean, I've known Chad, well, both of you for for a long time. I think I knew Chad first, though. But um, I mean, you were there, but I don't think I had as much interaction. Mm -hmm. um, and um, uh, yeah, I, you know, it's it's a very positive it's a very positive thing. We don't have term limits, so right. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe it's time. I was thinking that you know may, that just like transition to you and and Chad administratively, I think board not only needs members but needs some new leadership. I mean, I've been honored to do it, but I think that we want to cultivate new people in the leadership role. Um, you know, Barry and I, Barry's done it longer than I have, I guess. I don't know how long he's from been doing it. Yeah, from the beginning. And uh, because he was with voice experience even before Savannah. Oh. And he's, in um, right, and he is uh, from Hilton Head. So the kind of, the, it was a no-brainer for him to be involved with Savannah once we move to kind of 
this area of of the country so and um in what's uh, what what's the difference of being a bone member of being the chair um the chair involves a lot more um communication and involvement with decision making and budgets and um you know just more of an understanding and and also the communication and responsibility you know i i i feel that I, I, you know, if I can help in any way or for the things I do, but I'm often called on to help with banking, to help with, you know, odds and ends of things. And maybe not as my role as a chair, just because I'm willing to do it. But um, just the responsibility, a little different than, than the board member, uh, that, you know, just get involved in more of the details of the organization, uh -huh. um, which is, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's been easy, but it's just, you feel a sense of responsibility and you know Barry and I process things together periodically, um, and it's you know lots of communication with um, with leadership. And uh, and how would you um, you know as you say we we the idea of, of growing up the board and engaging more people how would you um, how do you spread the word about Savannah Boys Festival? That's the real challenge, you know. Um, I talk about it all the time. We send, you know, we add people to the um, mailing list as soon as we, you know, as soon as, it, and the board should all be doing that, is making sure that if they meet somebody who has a slight interest, um, just say, can we put you on the mailing list and pay attention? So, I mean, recently, you know, three or four people that have come in contact with, um, you know, gotten added in. But, um, it's a challenge because there's so many we're a small community first of all um and a small community you know savannah is a small city and of course you have the outlying area so we're talking 350 or something thousand people just in the you know the greater savannah area but it's you know our main program is summertime which eliminates a number of people who leave for the summer or travel during the summer and therefore away during our festival. The other is the awareness that it's opera, somehow opera, you know, gets a bad rap unless, you know, New York and other cities that have a major opera company that they cultivate that are, you know, our summer program being only two or three weeks long, um, I think has brought new people into the fold, but it's hard. It's a little bit hard to sell because you don't want to eliminate the fact that it's opera based, right. you know, that we're part of an opera company. Um, and it isn't even that it's that people are just so overwhelmed with the stuff. And um, it's just, it, it's hard. And we also get confused with the music festival. Um, you know, even I one time just, <laughs> called it the music festival, <laughs> you know, just, it was like right after the music festival when you were hearing it all the time. Um, but I think we're doing a great job. I think we have engaged so many people and any time they come, I mean, last Sunday's um, Levy concert where we sang with the, um, uh, Equinox. the, fabulous the Equinox. Equinox, yeah, I was gonna say the Equinox, the Equinox Orchestra raves. I mean, everybody just raved about it. Now, how that translates to people coming in the summer is another, you know, or supporting us financially uh, is is the challenge. Um, you know, that was a free concert. So, of course, people are going to come and they love it. Uh, so we have to just try to cultivate. In fact, let me share with you, um, Dale Levy, so this is going on all over, you know, said we should have had some things to hand out and I said, but it wasn't our concert. It was your concert. And so that would have been, you know, maybe overstepping our bounds. She said, well, let's talk about it next year, you know, or the next time. So I think having having collateral is what I, you know, you, you, whatever you call that, yeah. <laughs> you know, but things to hand out and advise, you know, giving people the awareness of what we do is probably important too, you know, putting things especially, in. Yeah. Especially an event like this in Savannah, which is uh, there's a lot of locals, and you know uh, we we know that that 
well, like everything, um, we have a, a, not a niche, but a, speci a specialty, right? So we are focused on classical music, classical right. vocal music, musical theater songs. So it's not everyone may, may be interested in that, but, but um, the important thing is that we spread the words and we give the opportunity to be exposed to that um, experience. Exactly. Exactly. And um, and the same way, like like yourself, you were not uh, a, you know regular avid uh, opera goer, uh, but suddenly you are very loving the experience. Also, yeah. not just the art form, but but the whole experience because you see you see the performance right now. You see the performance in a different way. You 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 see the performance like a family member sees yeah. a performance. Oh, so yeah. there's a there is a bit of that, and as uh, because we are local based in uh, at least the Savannah Voice Festival is is that so everyone that is in Savannah feels like it is their festival. Yeah. This is their local festival, and uh, and they have the opportunity to experience something new and something that is that I mean certainly if you are in Savannah uh, in August, then you have a huge opportunity to see a lot of little events and you can choose for so many repertoire and, and fun things to do. So um, we don't expect anyone to come to 25 events in two <laughs> weeks, uh, although many do. Uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, but uh, but it's um, good. It's, I'm glad that that the Libby concert was so well and, and, uh, and the, the Libby family was keen to promote our festival, so which yes. we should we should do anyway yes. in a way yes. it is done um, unofficially but because then then it brings uh, the the branding is uh, is really present so it's very clear that yeah well at, uh, we, at the concert voice festival was mentioned many many times and clay you know as he introduced the voice festival but unless people know what the voice festival is you know it, it just it's like okay i hear the name but i don't know what it is right uh, perhaps although it's interesting you know maria and i had a um at our annual birthday party together. Um, you were yep. a wonderful, yes, a companyist and leader and whatever. But I have one friend who um, I've tried to engage and she said, I just don't like vocal music. Well, she came to the party because I you know, invited her. Oh my gosh, that was wonderful. I might reconsider. <laughs> so things like that, where we can invite people for a different reason, as opposed to coming to a concert. I mean, they were coming to a musical thing, but if we, you know, get to promote that uh, in different ways, you know, different celebrations that the Voice Festival might be a part of or Voice Festival singers and be able to then say, oh, if you like this, you know, set aside time in the summer to see equally as wonderful right. performers. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I've yes. been to the Met, you know, now I, I really, I don't sit and listen to opera at home because frankly, when I'm home, I like it quiet. Um, so, but occasionally I turn something on. I just watched, um, uh, is it Dido? Dido and Aeneas. Mm -hmm. I'd never seen it before. And I was talking to Heather, um, Heather Jones about her coming in that role, you yeah. know. And so um, I said, well, I got to find out what this is all about. So I, I found it on YouTube. Actually, I do subscribe to um, Opera on Demand, uh, you know, the man Opera on Demand. Yeah. And so I just need to program myself to sit in front of it and or at least turn it on and listen but more it, often and what do you think about Dido? oh it was wonderful i know yeah it, that baroque is baroque music yes, yes? It, is baroque. Yeah. It, is a, it is the first uh english opera that i mean the oldest english opera that is in repertoire wow. and um it was a Purcell died very uh, young in the in the early thirties. Uh, he was very very talented. Purcell, and, uh, oh, is that his name? Purcell. Yeah, Purcell, Henry Purcell, and um, and this is his only full real opera, and it's also very short. It's only an hour, but the way that he he develops the character, it feels like you 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 really get to know them and you experience the whole process in a wonderful way and and with a lot of characters there are three major characters but also there are uh four other characters that are secondary they're all and uh, it's it's one of my favorite and so i'm very very happy to bring it um to bring daido to to savannah it will be our first uh, baroque yeah. opera but also we're doing it at the um, at the guard at the 
the sculpture garden in the Telfair, which is oh, the, the yes. sculptural gallery downstairs, which is so classical in, in style. And, and to do this classical story in a classical venue, it's just perfect. And it's very intimate. Yeah. Uh, with you will property. have super, will you have super titles? Because it's yeah. very hard to understand. Yeah, yeah. We will probably have super titles anyway. Yeah. Um, it although it's in English. It, it is, uh, it's a little old English, and, um, but always super titles helps. Uh, yeah. It facilitates. Well, just because the, the voice is, because of the pronunciation that it takes place because of the use of voice, yeah. it's not always as easy to, to hear, right. you know, all the English. Okay. But it was, yeah, I actually, I didn't sit and watch the whole thing. I watched some of it and listened because I was puttering around, yeah. but uh, the music is lovely, yeah. Yes, yeah. So at least just to have a sense of it and the sense of the story it's and, a yeah. Great, a lot of beautiful choral writing for it, uh, great vocal writing, very famous arias, uh, three very, very famous arias in the show. So, um, oh, who told us that? Uh, Cheka, yes. <laughs> what? Wait, no, it says, uh, Jessica said that she learned Baroque style uh, from from us, from me, uh, ten years ago, I, I love Baroque style. So, oh wow! Uh, I know, I know. Yeah. Jessica, since she was a student at NYU, and then came to to um, a program, summer program in in New York, and then in, finally what? we invited her to come here. And so, what Jessica? Which Jessica? Jessica? Tishofen. Oh, okay, yeah. yeah. She, you know, she and Scott stayed at my house the first year she came. Oh. They were here for a month, for the whole month. It was such fun. And then the next year, she stayed. Scott was busy with other schooling, and he didn't wasn't part of the program, but he came for a few days. Um, so I've known Jessica, and actually, I work out with Jessica. She's a you know a, a licensed fitness instructor. Right. <laughs> so, yeah, it's been it's been great. Uh, you know, I feel like she's family. <laughs> and and she sang in the concert, in the Libby concert. Jessica. Oh yes. Yeah, and she sings at my congregation. She's oh, wow. a cantorial soloist, so she's there. Everybody adores her. She did an amazing show um, last Saturday night or Sunday yeah. night, which it was. Yeah, she's going to be doing it at Birdland in New York. Oh, wow, Birdland! Yeah, May twenty fifth, I think. You can clarify with her if you're going to be in the city. Yeah, great. it was it was wonderful. It was just great. It was a cabaret kind of style yeah, yeah. show, and she was amazing. In fact, she's doing it again in Hilton Head, I think on June 4th. So we're thinking of going oh, out wow. and seeing her again. To see it again. That's fun. Yeah. yeah. I I did a, uh, yeah. uh, I did a, a, an opera in January that was set in Berlin because it was inspired in the life of, of um, um, uh, Parker. So it was, I, I knew a lot about Berlin. So, but I, I actually didn't know that it, it, it still existed. So I and I think they have a cellar, a basement yeah. thing. I, I, I don't know what it's called, but that, um, excuse me, I have an itch. Um, that, you know, is for cabaret stuff, I guess. I don't know. She can, she can yeah, describe it, it better, yeah, but. It is, it is in Holland, so it's, it's great, so. But if you can uh, go there, if you can go when, uh, when she's there, if you're in town. I'm, I'm not really... in town until July, mid-July, oh. right before. I'm, I'm in, in town like a week before going to Savannah Voice Festival because I'm oh. literally, I'm, I'm out nonstop until July 2nd. Whoa. Uh, and, and then there's just one day before going to Japan, you know, we're doing butterfly and, um, oh. and we're bringing some of our, uh, the artists that I work with in Japan to, to sing in butterfly. So it's really, uh, we are very excited with the season. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. It's, it's gonna be great. We, yeah. We're going to get together and start looking at sponsorships and stuff and try to yeah. engage, you know, getting people engaged. But, you know, one of the things I just have to sort of um, continue to, to emphasize is the interaction with the singers. And that's where it feels like family. And they feel like family. They come back sometimes just to come to Savannah, um, you know, and stay with some of us. And um, it, it really has been, I've learned so much from them, you know, just being here in my house and, he, seeing their their trajectory of of um, career uh, and the challenges, you know, the many many challenges of being a singer and auditioning all the time, etc., and seeing those who've been aware that this career 
character isn't going to work for them. It's not going to happen the way they, you know, hoped. And that they find other ways to use their creativity. And um, I mean, not, a number of them, I know a few of them, you know, sing in, in synagogues and churches. Yep. Um, you know, and, and even if they're not Jewish, well, Marie and Cheryl both did in synagogues, you know, which is interesting uh, and wonderful. But, um, you know, just the reality of their lives and uh, which is just, you know, fascinating, and this talent that they bring, that every one of them brings. Um, yeah. I, I just have been amazed at the, you know, how they have to learn the language of the, of you know, their piece, plus understand what they're saying, plus act it out. I remember going to an amazing class that um, master class, uh, opera's drama that um, uh, Fabrizio did, and it was like, oh my gosh, it it gave me a whole different awareness of the fact that they're not learning just, they're not using their voice. They're having to emote, they're having to, un, you know, it just blew me away, you know, that opera singers have so much and probably singers in general, but I think opera more than anything because there's so much more cultivation of the voice. You know, people are so much more aware of vocal range, et cetera. And then having, having to do it all and how they do it. I was watching one of Cheryl's old operas and the physicality of it while you're trying to breathe. I mean, it was in one scene, I don't even remember what I was watching. He was sort of like doubled over or almost, you know, bending down. Where's the breath coming from <laughs> to be able to do that when your body is constricted? So I'm, I'm, I just have seen so much that I would never have seen with any other program. I think that the fact that we connect and that um, people who host have that ability and make friends, you know, keeping in touch with some of these singers um, on a regular basis or peri even periodically and just feeling that they're part of the family and, and they feel the same way. Yeah, it is, a, it is a, a great opportunity to host people. I mean, for both, for the singers and the host to, to get to new new people every year. And sometimes that they come back and they, they feel like they have a home. And, and then if they don't come back, then you have space for a new singer that he may become your friend. And uh, it, is a, it is a very challenging uh, profession and, um, and, and you never know where it's going to go. I always say that I'm actually a failed pianist in a way. <laughs> uh, I mean, if, if, if I was thinking, oh, I want to play piano concertos with orchestra, well, I'm not doing that. Uh, but by no means I'm a fellow musician. Uh, in, yeah. so, so there's many ways to, to fulfill and find out what you do and, and finding out what you're good at yeah. or, or what you, people want you to do. That is also true. And, um, and what you enjoy doing, it's, it takes time. And it, and, uh, but the, the thing is that we love what we do. And I always say to my students, if you can do something else, do something else. Uh, we only do art because we cannot do anything else. Uh, mm -hmm. And it's, it's very important that we are aware of that because uh, we had to do it and, and, uh, and find um, a, an institution with a support team like, like Savannah Voice Festival and the Show Me program that help people connect, uh, not just training, but, but connect, as you say, this idea of, of um, finding sponsorships that will involve directly with some singers uh, to connect uh, students with teachers, to connect um, artists with audience members. It's, it's a great way of, of helping and somehow, and also both, I mean, we, we not only help artists to perform, but also we help audience to learn um, to appreciate our form and, and mm -hmm. we do all kind of art form, which is not only do opera or, or, or only musical theater, or only song. So, right. of course, it's all vocal. Yeah. It's, it's all vocal and it's, uh, it is kind of classical oriented. Even our musical theater is, is with the, you know, with the Cheryl approach of, of classical singing. Um, but it is, it is a great way to, to connect and bring people to that um, side. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, we do. I think our festival is very mindful of appealing to a wide range and sort of sometimes it's like hooking them in <laughs> with the popular and then yeah. getting them. I remember when we did um, uh, Forever Plaid, 
and people who would not have come to an opera came and raved about it. And hopefully some of them have continued. But if nothing else, if we meet that and they know, they're always blown away by the voices. You know, they think, oh, it's just a, you know, yeah, when they don't know about us, it's, they're not sure what quality or what caliber of, of vocalists we're bringing. And then they're like, oh my gosh, the voices are spectacular. And, um, and the skill set is just amazing with everybody. I mean, obviously they're screened carefully and, and brought here. You know, you bring the best of the best that you, that you have, you know, the best you have to offer um, through all of the additions that you do. But, um, I, I, you know, I just, it's, it's one of my favorite, you know, um, connections. And again, more because, as much because of the personal and, okay. and you know, the warmth that everybody, I mean, has, you know, being able to, like when you guys were here and uh, when was it for? Was that for your birthday? Oh, that's what it was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, and, you know, being able to sit around the dinner table at my house, uh, you know, and, and, and that level of, of comfort and connection, that's, that's family. And that's available to really anybody who wants to get involved. Um, in fact, yeah, you know, I, I've heard of several, I don't feel I'm at liberty to, to share this, but one of the singers said that they were connecting with, with one of their former hosts and doing something, you know, outside of the realm of, of yeah. um, the, the voice festival. And that's lovely to make friends and feel, and supporters, you know, with somebody, they had been her sponsor, I think. And anyway, it it's just an experience that most people don't get. And so I feel very fortunate. Excellent, excellent. Well, thank you so much for your time. It was, I mean, thank you for everything. Thank you for being, <laughs> the president uh, the chair of the board and 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 helping us uh, make this happen and uh, you always get new people and and it's always great to uh, to be with you and help you at your place and uh, <laughs> and uh, thank you for um for you know continue spreading the word and uh, so i'll um yeah we'll see you soon i mean i think the the next time we actually see in person will be right before the the festival right. that's when yeah we, um that's when we start we, we go there actually a week before the festival starts just to start a rehearsal some preparation so we'll see you yes. in july yes. all right yes. which Lovely. is actually Lovely. almost two months away not that i know I mean, it goes and it goes so fast it's like i can't believe yeah, so. yeah how fast the time Excellent. goes but it's yeah Thank you, thank you, thank you so for giving you this opportunity. It's yeah, fun to it was talk fantastic to talking to you. Thank you. And everyone uh, watching and in now in, in recorded because this is going to be recorded and a lot of people watch it afterwards. And, and it's also, uh, you can do it as a, as a, a pod, so a podcast, so you can hear it and, and just be interested. Oh, uh, uh, thank you for joining us. And uh, please learn, no, learn more about Savannah Voice Festival. And um, I will see you in, in two weeks when we do another interaction um, installment of our voices of the festival. Thank good. you. All right. Thanks. Have a good day. Safe Thank travels. Bye-bye.